Hello, baby. I, I, the hello actually, man? Yeah, I'm the hello man. I was actually going to... I hate saying hello. You know, I hate the internet, by the way. Um, okay. One of the many things I, I dislike. Um, but the whole uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I think he's ruined the word hell, like hello. Really? I thought yeah. that... I mean, maybe hello there is a phrase, but I think the word hello is um, safe, in my opinion. You could start out the podcast by saying ahoy hoy, which is what Alexander Graham Bell thought that well, uh, that's people the, should open phone conversations well, with. The thing, the thing with that is that that has to be the last thing anyone says on a phone. Like, like at the end of time, not to be eschatol eschatology what is es- eschatology that's like the, that's like the study of like the end times right eschatological uh, ultra analyst <laughs> ultra analytist yeah. uh, i you know i don't know what the, i don't know what the fuck a fascist is um mm-hmm. <laughs> shout out aiden ross bro like, <laughs> he's gonna know? be on the pod next week we're, we're excited <laughs> yeah i don't know what he's like uh, what do you <laughs> think his, that's a joke what do you think his like biggest menswear mispronunciation would be Oh yeah, I want to get him and just have him pronounce a bunch of like like brands. How I don't do you know what pronounce I, Cuccinelli. Uh, Cuccinelli. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah. Uh, what's another one? Maybe some like we need to come up with some French brands like husbands. He would never be able to pronounce that. You know. I don't know what that has buns are. <laughs> has buns. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I has know. buns. Got two of them of steel. Yeah. Or uh, I was thinking, like, how would he say like spettatura? Spreza, spreza tour. Spre, spreza torture. Spreza, spreza torture. <laughs> well, because the thing is, when, it's like he's just like tour. making up in the in the video that yeah. we're talking about. Everyone, look up. Aiden Ross discovers what fascism is. <laughs> in the video, he's just like adding syllables and letters to work. Like he's not even like fully reading the words. I don't think he's just glancing at it's, it. That's what I'm to... saying. Like it's it's almost like it, it's. it's it's so it's close. It's it's yeah. so close to being right. You know what I mean? Like it has to be Masoli. Yeah, Benito Masoli. <laughs> uh, wait. If I look, at, I'll, I'll look it up right now. If I look up fascism, and I uh, example. Okay, here we go. Leaders of fascism. Benito uh, Benito Masoli, Giovanni uh, Genital. Genital. <laughs> Genital. Yeah. Jason kind of puts Stanley. a little ga- accent on that. Yeah. And then. Um, anyway, we're still yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, wait, Hold on, I'm going to keep going on this list, and I go, oh, shit, oh, this is my, I no. can't look up stuff on the internet, no, dude, fa- come on, chat, let's he, get out of here. That's enough internet for me he, today. He, says, yeah. he doesn't say fascist, he says fascist. He yeah, keeps saying fat, so in this video, it's a streamer, Our, we, yeah. I feel like we should just No, I'm not, I, how about this, I'm not going to even tell them, how about, let the people look it up, just okay. look it up, you know, you can look up like I did with fascism, it's a far-right autocracy. 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 Ultra, I don't know what that shit ultra, means, bro. Ultra, I don't know what this shit means. Oh my god, ultra analytist. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great uh, video. C- centralized autocracy. Anyway, uh, welcome. This is Down Direction, a meme podcast. <laughs> a meme, a meme review. Right. <laughs> meme meme review. We're getting, we're getting in on the meme review game. Yeah. Content cop. Take that, I dubs. We're back, baby. Yeah. What other like, like? Where are you? What other hey. like slightly outdated YouTube formats can we start doing? Equals three. Re, re, yeah, let's do equals three. Yeah, we, we review three top like TikToks, and it's like let's, let's like, dive in. Wait, now how about what? Who's we need to bring back? Yeah, like um, Philip DeFranco. We need to we need to bring back the, he's, the sexy he's kind Phil of, news thing. Well, he's is like, he still doing the same format of like? Yeah, I mean, he's. It's funny because you know, obviously, I follow a lot of like left wing like TikTokers, and they all like, you know. They don't like his liberal his liberal like takes because I think he's like sponsored by like some like I think someone bought him out I think I I just remember watching him during like I think I can't remember if I was watching his videos during the two thousand eight election or if I was watching him in like twenty ten and just watching a bunch of old videos but I remember his his video talking about how dumb John McCain was for picking Sarah Palin and I was like yeah you're right Phil <laughs> how about the how about uh when he rat he has a song about how he met his girlfriend. I don't think I remember that. I do oh remember my God, all the Eagles how I songs. met my girlfriend. Yeah, and like what, the, what some guy auto tuned his story. Do you, uh, do you know there was? I remember. I remember this one time in one of his videos. This was again when I was in like elementary school or middle school or something, 
and he was talking about how he had like a handyman come over and the handyman commented on his condoms and i was hmm. like wait a minute this guy's having premarital sex i don't like that at all <laughs> i was like i was like a little upset actually i i hate sex yeah yeah um uh, but, sxc phil yeah, just to be clear, once again, this is not a religious podcast. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> hey, you write it up this time. Hey, yeah, hey, this is Spencer. You gotta take. Yeah. You gotta take autocracy for your. Uh, for your. <laughs> That's right. For your <laughs> fast, for your, fastest. For your I I keep suppressing. I keep suppressing things. Suppressing things. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, tell that to be to Masoli, dude. Uh, mm-hmm. Anyway, this is Spencer podcast <laughs> sound direction. I'm Ethan M Wong. I'm Spencer DSO. I'm MJ. And I hope you guys like. And you're looks. the listener. You uh, and I'll be your customer this evening. <laughs> you know, um, yeah. we're talking about so many things, and today is one of those things. We're talking about. I I wrote down learn tangibly, but maybe like is this learn like analog learning? Is that a thing? Is that is that like a analog learning? I don't. I feel like learning tangibly explains the concept pretty well. Um, okay, the term analog teaching refers to autocrats, I'm just kidding, the teaching process <laughs> that students use, uh, okay, okay, maybe it's like the streaming thing, because like, I'm like live and I'm trying to read this. Yes, it's, it's techniques it's which are pressure. analog rather than digital, like collage, comic, painting. Uh, well, that's, paint- we're talking about all those things, collage, comics, and painting. That's right, CCCs, wait a minute, wait, <laughs> CCP. Oh, hold on. Yeah. It's a conspiracy. Uh, um, autocracy yeah. <laughs> in the making right here um yeah we're, so we're talking about learning tangibly because we kind of had our first episode about like a mentor evangelism or how people get into this and uh and we kind of you know discussed the uh the mindset that people find attractive or the the rate the reasons why people find our mindset of mentor attractive and uh i think we've also said that it's biased because we only do it to our friends and our friends <laughs> are the main ones who do this too yep. um but i thought we'd maybe we dive in a little deeper on like the actual way of getting to mentor and uh it's by it's by fucking doing it tangibly That's baby right. you gotta touch the stuff yeah um, um i mean i think this is especially important with menswear where so much of it is like little details we have a whole we have a whole episode about uh details that's like that three years what? old by the way though, yeah at this point we could probably start recycling topics and just be like you know <laughs> He'll be um, like a uh, teaching men's fashion. Here's the top five men's wear details you should that they should bring back. Number one, belt backs. Number two, there you go, exactly. <laughs> Just um, on and on, baby. No, no, but like you know, the most the most I learned, especially starting out, is and you know we'll get into probably more specifics in a little bit. But like you yeah. know, I didn't I didn't learn from just like browsing on fucking fedora lounge.net or whatever Mm -hmm. i learned a lot from going to stores and talking to the shop owners or going to like you know the the backyard sales and stuff like that and talking to sellers and other enthusiasts or whatever um and that's where you really that's where that's you know hey that's where the real learning happens yeah i think it's important we you know we we're, we're kind of like a philosophical or like a social commentary podcast at some points and um and one of the things that tends to come up you know, not just with menswear, but like in general, is how digital everything is nowadays. And digital. Yeah, you know, fucking Digimon, digital monsters. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but about, you know, whatever. Yeah, all all the monsters are digital now. But when I was a kid, my monsters were in my pocket. Funny, because yeah. mine were real. Mine were in mine Whoa. were in my closet. Ah, yeah. There yeah. It is. <laughs> how about Monsters Incorporated? We scare because we care. Yeah. Sullivan, uh, R.I.P. Mr. James Warren. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. Sully. Yeah. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I guess he tried to kill him. Um, but, yeah, we know. I think we talked about, like, you know, there's a lot of discussion about, like, you know, the arts of stuff and how, we you know, this every generation. I mean, we kind of talked about it with, like, the whole uh, stats and culture, how culture, like, the, the rise of the Internet kind of ruins something it's the special parts about culture and i think of one one aspect mm-hmm. of that is like the tangibility of it you know and i and if we bring it back to menswear there's so much menswear media on the internet uh, you know not just like inspiration which we'll get into later but like you learn the the rules of menswear you learn the guides you get yep. you you get the you know and they i tell think, you I mean, the details on the internet i've i've i, I think there's got to be like yeah way more emphasis on a little aside but just thinking about it, I think there's got to be way more emphasis on rules now with the internet um, than any other time in the past. Because, like, 
Like, think about like how many how many uh, uh, like books do you think were printed that were like the top five rules for like wearing a suit or whatever, and include like you have to make sure that your belt is the exact same like shade of leather as your shoes and all this stuff. Like that was probably like conventional wisdom, but it's not like it was delineated as much and like yeah. codified as much as it is now with the internet and like MFA and all these YouTubers and stuff like that. Well, that's I feel. It's kind of tough, right? Like when you look at old Esquire stuff, there is still style columns in there. Absolutely, um, but you look at the you look at the like all the illustrations, and it's like it's hard to look at all the illustrations and come up with rules because everyone's oh, sure. wearing, everyone's like wearing their own thing, um, and wearing like a pretty unique style. Like even among the Esquire men, like they well, you know, we've ta- I, we talked about how there are like distinct characters in yeah, the Esquire yeah. man canon. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I guess you're right. There is a need to kind of codify this stuff, but like, and it's also mm-hmm. to bring it back to the main topic. Like, it's best to to put it into action, right? Like you, like I think what happens with everything on the internet just ends up people taking it at its word. They don't really get like the not the ethos, but like like what it really means. Like I, I okay, I was literally inside. I was in the Discord, and a guy was mm-hmm. all like, "Hey, what belt should I wear with my white Air Force ones? Because everything I'm reading tells me that I should match my leathers, but like, why would I own a, a white belt? And I'm like, this is like it in action here. We're yeah. like, well, because I mean, the other thing is like back in the day, like people who weren't interested in clothing would just never know these rules. Like they would just like it would never come up and they would never have to learn it. Yeah. Um, and now, now because everyone's just constantly exposed to infographics and, uh, MFA and every, you know it's everyone's homepage. Everyone's visiting it's, MFA every day. And it's also funny. I know we're kind of talking about this whole big, this whole first part about like rules. Yeah. But like, um, I think the the main issue is that people assume that the internet, or even or even just like reading a book, like you know, even if you like read like Alan Flusser's like you know men, um, what's it called, dressing the man. Mm-hmm. I think it's like if someone writes it, people kind of assume this authority about it. And now I sound like I could be like a fucking <laughs> moon denier. Where like if I read it, it doesn't mean it's real. But hear me out here where it's like you just the real way to connect with things especially if it's a hobby or something that's super personal is like you have to like be tangible like you have to like yeah. touch it tangibly because that's the only way because if you just assume that it's written and that's how you're supposed to follow it it makes it everything dispassionate it's almost like reinforcing the whole like pragmatic mindset that we saw earlier or we discussed in the previous episode I mean, you I know. think this is this episode, I think, is just going to end up being pretty similar to the one that we did about, uh, like, participating in menswear, I guess, because it's it's it's, you know, it's it's kind of the same. Well, it's it's like the same lesson, I guess, to take away. It's like you can't yeah. just do everything on the Internet. It's like the, the if, if you want to or at least the way that we enjoy fashion and the way that we think others should enjoy fashion and get more out of it. Right. You kind of have to go out if, in the world and talk to other people. You can't yeah, just Yeah, and you got to try all. it on, yeah. too. Like, you can't just, like, you know... I know that, like, a lot of men's wear... And, and we do it, too, where we try and game the system. Like, we obviously, we, all, we don't want everyone to go through the same strife we did. But I think the more we've done this and the more discussions we have, it's almost like that the strife is almost impossible to, to avoid, mm-hmm. but like you should take that as a positive and like use that and like really, really learn from it. You know, like, like just because, you know, you got the waist measurement online, like on eBay, like this it doesn't mean you'll get a perfect eBay purchase or even like a ready to wear purchase, you know, like you got to try it on so you can feel how it is on your body. You know, like all my jackets have the same vibe, but they all have like different hard measurements, mm-hmm. right? Like, but they just contribute differently. Like they, they feel differently when I wear it and that, that can still create like a different vibe. Um, and I just, I, I enjoy it that way. You know, like I have I mean, jackets that are shorter, but I still wear it and it still looks good because I put it on as opposed to like, you know, if I, if I was just going up from hard measurements, I'd be like, oh, I'd avoid this, you know? Yeah, because of, you know, like you're not going to learn how something fits on you and so how something looks on you until you actually try it on. Like all your like very um like picky things about it's like you know you want loafers with like low vamps or whatever or you want a very specific kind of lapel like you would never discover that just looking at pictures like it's hard to, it's sometimes it's hard to tell the difference like if you're not like really into it looking at an alden versus you know some fucking stacy adams loafer or something with a higher a higher vamp you're not going to be able to really tell the difference unless you try them on see how they look differently and then you start to notice it 
Yeah. And it's the yeah. same thing with like a lot of tiny details like that. Like you would never know. It's like, oh, the spear point collar like fits so well in the frame of a jacket unless you try on those things. And that's what kind of frames the face. I'm, I'm not to say not to be the whole men's singularity where our taste is uh-huh. superior and you should just join it. But like, I mean, when you get to see it, um, it just that's what makes you people appreciate. I think one of the issues slightly aside uh, with like vintage is that because it's so uncommon people will react negative t- negatively to it and they'll never be able to see it on them. So they'll never be able to expand that like appreciation for it, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and we'll get into like how to learn and, and why tang- learning, learning tangibly is better. But like, yeah, I think what happens now with the internet is that like when you, you just feel like this kind of maybe superiority that like, you know, just because you read it and you try to gain the system means that you've, you've gotten it. And I think that takes out, um, like the spirit of all of this, you know, this idea that you can still learn something by like, <laughs> by touching grass. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, like, so like you can you can read about grass. You can look at a photo about it. You can maybe read a book that describes grass, but you'll never know what it is until you fucking touch it. You gotta you know? touch it. And I think like there there is something beautiful. I know that sounds so dumb. I feel like I'm a fucking want to be philosopher but like there is something really nice about like just doing things tangibly you know it's and again as another aside i feel like the more i talk to people online the more i see issues of this not this with like fashion but like sometimes where i'm like oh yeah like we met online and like maybe this is my bias like i could never do an online only relationship you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like i can't I, just go in like, vr chat man it's easy like, oh, no okay. <laughs> that's what i'm saying yeah see like and there's a whole documentary about why that it's like touching but here's the thing you 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 watch the documentary they fucking met up in person dude yeah yeah so th- you can't you can't deny that you, you can't you can't completely do stuff i mean like, there's just i don't know like i, I online I, like we talked to, yeah we there's there's the internet's not as cool as real life. I think that's like yeah. what bottom line. There's no replacement, right? Yeah. What's the thing from Ready Player One? <laughs> well, I don't. I don't know. You're no, it's at the end suit. where. <laughs> no, I'm talking about like at the I end. Like Mark Rylance. Mark Rylance is like the internet is nice, but real life is the only place you could get a good meal or whatever he sounds like. Oh yeah, uh, I was. Um, yeah, I, that's fine. I'm not gonna do an impression. I think you got it. <laughs> yeah, but then uh, and then of course Parzival turns off the internet one day a week. Yeah, he forces people and shuts down the global economy for two days. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. So maybe the, the implications but, of this ending. But, you know, maybe that's what we maybe that's what we need a little bit. But, yeah, I mean, like, I, as we'll get into later, it's like I think like, the yeah, the Internet just kind of like flattens everything and makes it a little bit more like boring and less special, in my opinion. It's just like, um, yeah, we'll get we'll get into it. Yeah, well, we're going to get into it now. It's like, so why do we think learning tangibly is better? Like, I think at first it's like Internet bad. Um, mm-hmm. But like, I think when you're. It's like tasting food, right? Like you just, yeah. it's one of those things where like, if evangelism is working or inspiration, whatever you want to call it, it should make you want to do that thing. And I think experiencing it that way is just like, like it's just the best, you know, like I'm not going to read about a burger. I want to fucking eat that burger, you know, like yeah. a Yelp review can this, only go so far, yeah. you know, or, or even yeah, staying exactly. on the, uh, the food analogy like i know we used cooking before in, in the past how it's like yeah yeah you can you can like follow a recipe like online but you have to like as you cook you have to taste what you're cooking because you don't yeah. even know if it's gonna be good exactly that's like that's a great one i like that yeah and, I, and with fashion it's like it, it, historically you would have to go into the store and buy and buy your clothes you have to try mm-hmm. it on they'd encourage you to do that you know like like, just because you are a 38 doesn't mean you buy a 38. Like, what if you're, like, you know, taller? So maybe, like, you want, like, a, you you buy a 40 because the length yeah. of a 40 is just better suited for your frame. And then you take it in, right? Like, you know, there's, there's so, a fashion in general is just so tangible. You know, maybe it's, this is also, I mean, like, an anti-NFT <laughs> episode. But it's, but it's also, <laughs> it's, it's also, like, this is why, like, I've always been like, man, it sucks doing a menswear podcast because I wish we could just... Like show pictures and stuff like that but yeah it's like all we about do. yeah i mean we do in the blog posts and all that but it's yeah. yeah it's like it's 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 all about just how like how this physical cloth is interacting with your physical body and stuff like that um and yeah it's it's in order to really try like figure out your true size especially like you know if for off the rack i guess not if you're doing a bespoke uh thing but for off the rack you need to try on a bunch of different sizes because yeah. um 
I mean, you could measure to like one thing, but like for, depending on the brand, it's going to look different on you because of the way that they cut it. And as our Discord has told us, like lots of brands don't give like every measurement that you need, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like you just you just got to try it on, you know, uh, th- to the extent that it's possible. Right. Like I, I, also, I also don't want this to take away from this episode to be like, oh, you're only relegated to like what's around you. I think mm-hmm. it's a it's a healthy dose of both. Like you got to learn on the Internet and you got to do stuff in person to kind of fully form like this men's like the fully form the men's were hobby you know mm-hmm. it's it's like i don't know what i guess what what else could this be like any kind of like, yeah cooking i guess you know like you gotta you gotta like you can you can get a whole bunch of recipes online you can look up stuff that like food that excites you then you just gotta buy your ingredients and make the damn thing and i mean it. it could it's like it's like any like creative form i feel like you know mm-hmm. like with music you know you could learn like you know, you you're, oh, you're yeah, a musician. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You there's yeah. a difference between like just learning how to play the piano and like playing it at home, mm. and versus like jamming with a group of musicians. I'm glad you like, brought that's that a... one up too. Yeah, I mean, or, yeah, the, uh, or even, uh, take, yeah, yeah, or staying staying on that. Um, it's like it's like finding your own like style or your own sound, mm-hmm. right? Because you can sound like. Mm-hmm one dimensional as like a musician or like whatever but like for you to sound like ethan m wong it's like it's it's its own yeah your your fingers are are its own thing right like like, be there and like develop it i remember reading no go on sorry uh rough ideas is kind of like a it's a uh, compose or a pianist and it's like a bunch of not really memoir. It's almost like a blog. It's like it's like it's just like a paragraphs blog. of his thoughts, and it's like <laughs> five hundred pages. And I think it's really fascinating because it's like, you know, if if the whole point of music was to like make like the the the, the ultimate recording, like then it, we would have stopped a long time ago. Like there's been yeah. savants forever, but like the whole idea is that you want to hear this person do it. Mm-hmm. And there's a whole thing of like even pianos in, in the room that you're recording it in all make a difference. And, you know, and maybe like, you know, maybe your hand was like a half, you know, a, a microsecond, mm-hmm. like it didn't stretch out as far. Like the, all this like contributes to like the art of musical performance, you know? And I, I think that that's really cool. And, and, um, and I think just like, yeah, like the other thing is just like anything, educational so it's like you know yes, if, yes. to bring it to bring it back to just like sticking with the arts if you were like there's a difference between being someone who like you know is subscribed to the like fine art subreddit and someone who is uh like you know joins their local like art appreciation society and goes to galleries and goes to like lectures and stuff like that or like you know uh and i'm not saying that you have to do this if you're like if you want to call yourself like someone who's into art but it's just like that's you know it's it's a different level of dedication like i did this with like uh with history like i was interested in history and then i joined my local historical society and now i have access to you know a bunch of like documents or people with knowledge or whatever that i didn't have access to before um and yeah it's, it's just harder to it's i don't know just being the kind of person i am I prefer to get my knowledge and information from other people um, as much as I can rather than just from like the internet or something. Yeah. Right. It's also like, yeah, it's a different type of other person. Cause like you could maybe mm-hmm. say the internet is like another person, but like, like be being there experiencing it with your own eyes, ears and everything. And the I ability to just really like, special. you know, instantly ask questions, get feedback and Hey, hey this all applies to close too. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. I, I like would I, say I, it's sorry. Go ahead. Well, no, I was I was just going to say really quick, like I remember, you know, I mentioned going to backyard sales at the at the beginning of the the episode. But yeah, that's like, you know, stuff like that, where where there's a vintage collector who's like, oh, yeah, this is like a cool belt back jacket from the 30s. Like you could see the pleats on the pocket or like all these little details and like physically pointing them out to me. And then I could like hold it in my hands. Like that's how I that's how I learned everything. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you when you learn in person, like I mean, it creates like a personal narrative and story Mm -hmm. that just, it just makes it feel like, I mean, I like star Wars because I watched it in the theater as a kid. And then I watched it at home. Like I I didn't just like look at photos of Luke Skywalker and be like, Oh, I like this. Like I saw the whole thing, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? And I think that if this whole uh, episode is about kind of adding on to what helps people connect with clothing, like this is it like this is what makes people develop an interest in clothing when they can see it on their bodies they can touch it they can wear it and they should people should 
we should celebrate the idea that people can do this. You know, yeah. it shouldn't be seen as like a debt, like, you know, like, oh, I wish the clothes could just like, I just want to be scanned and given to me. Like, that's not how this works, you know? Yeah, because like, I mean, well, maybe we should talk about, so sorry, finish your thought. No, I was going to say like, the, like you can't, the, the whole thing of this, it can't just be like gaming the system. Like mm-hmm. we, we talked about like, you know, being anti-pragmatist, being, you know, being anti min max. And now we're being like, you know, like it, it's just, it's just about being pro tangible, pro analog you know yeah um i i maybe we mentioned this in the evangelism episode yeah but there is something that's like fun about you know if there's someone who's like not really interested in clothes or fashion and you hand them something it's like hey try this on or something Mm. and then they see that they look really good in it and it's like that realization it's like oh clothes can do this for me yeah like there's something that's like nice about that that you really only get uh, trying stuff on in person. That's true. I mean, maybe this is like uh, I can only speak for myself here because uh, apparently everyone else hangs out with cool people. But like I have nerd friends, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. and and these guys like you know they're not. I mean, I don't know. Actually, I don't know where I was going with this. I mean, maybe they're, they're <laughs> like they're like skeptical. Maybe like I think I think nerd guys definitely are kind of min maxi by by default. You know, like I mean. Obviously, when you want to build a computer, like you, you buy the best pieces or something, you know, or, or you know, whatever. So I get that how that can kind of poison other aspects. But it's also like, you know, yeah, bringing the nerd to touch grass. Uh, but some of my friends are also like unconventional body size looking. Maybe like they're really tall, you know, or, or mm-hmm. they're just, you know, bigger than like an average, you know, an average size or whatever. I mean, even even for me, like I, I have to wear like I, I wear a 40 because like even though I'm like 5'8 because like, it's people's body people's bodies are different but it is tough when you you know you have a guy who is skeptical about suits and you know they just can't see on themselves because a lot of menswear media has a lot of hot people you know Mm -hmm. and it's it it is hard like we talked about this a little bit about like the like the race episode with the asian american thing about like you know it's important to see representation um and so like one of my biggest things is like yeah you might not see you know, an Asian guy or or a bigger guy in some in some magazine, but be the magazine. Like, go to J. Crew, go to Suit Supply, and put it on, so then you can see yourself in it. Then you can like inspire. I mean, it's kind of like inspiring yourself. Like, whoa, I look good in this. I want to continue doing things that make me look good, and that's the only way you can do it. Because otherwise, if you're gonna rely on just like what the internet is showing you, the internet is still biased. You know, it's still there's still like this ideal that's in there that make that can kind of affect you. Like, I felt like this too. Like, I thought. You know, I guess maybe not with like looking sexy, but like I was like, oh, I can't wear baggy clothes because it just doesn't look good on me. And then I mm-hmm. put it on. I'm like, oh, I see what's going on here. Like, you know, if I if I if I like rolled up the pants so it, it, it drapes cleanly, I'm like, oh, so it's not pooling. Like, I just I never thought of that, you know, yeah. and, and it's unfortunate when you see when you look up like, you know, at least, you know, 10 years ago, you look up images of like big full cut pants. It's you're going to see like 90s guys like Dockers, you know pulling at the ankles the trouser you know uh the trouser rise like kind of collapsing because the guy's not wearing it at his actual like natural waist and so you don't really see that and of course the images you see that's like okay it's it's uh clark gable like well that doesn't look like me you know what i mean Mm. like i don't i don't see it and the illustrations are also fake so you just don't get it until like spencer said you go to the you know you go to the vintage store you go to the parties you go oh i can see this now you know, the, there was uh die workwear did a Twitter thread that was talking about all the, the like he posted a bunch of pictures of like uh, like suits that she in sells like suits yeah. for men. Um, and they're all like really bad. <laughs> like all of them looked like, you know, like like costume suits or pajamas or something <laughs> like that. Mm, but yeah. like a couple of the comments I saw were like people, you know, not into fashion who were like like literally these suits like he would post a photo of a Shein suit next to like ring jacket or the armory or Taylor Kate or something. And then the comments were like, these two things look exactly the same. I don't know what point you're trying to make here, but it's like, I, first of all, I don't know if they're lying. I don't know if they're just trying to be snarky. It's like, <laughs> uh, why do you care so much nerd or something? But I feel like if you had the two things next to them physically in person, no one would ever be able to say this Shein suit that's made of like two micrometer thick polyester cloth or whatever. Yeah. It's the same thing as this like, you know, fully canvassed wool suit. Well, I think this is that kind of ties to what we were saying in evangelism where like 
ultimately some of the best people who are the most responsive are our friends not mm -hmm. just because we're similar but it's because they can see it on us and i fully believe that they can people are smart enough to be like hey this guy's suit or milserp or whatever is different than like the banana republic chinos i see or whatever mm -hmm. like i can see the difference and you know he might not be wearing it but like that's still different than like comparing two static images on the internet yeah I think that's still kind of tangible, I don't, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, I don't know why I made it sound like I was like, oh, oh, oh like Mitch oh, McConnell or something. Tangible. Yeah. Uh, oh, Mitch McConnell. I'm afraid I'm on fire. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm on fire. That should <laughs> be, a, oh, that's, that's yours. That, that should there, be one yeah. of your suits. That's I need be. to put that in there. Yeah. Um, but I, I truly think people, people can really get get it, you know, when they, when they see it and they can touch it. Because, I mean, that's, that's, I literally said that in the other episode. I'm like, hey... Ethan, like if someone says, hey, Ethan, how can we wear a suit? I'm like, hey, touch this shoulder. Oh, yeah. there's nothing. In like, they got to touch it because they, they won't believe it, right? Like, it, it's like one step, right? They, they, they'll they say, oh, hey, I can see something's different about this this guy, this suit, this garment than like the typical suits I see online. Mm -hmm. Then number two, it's like they can't wear it because maybe we're a different size or, or, or if they are my style, I'll, I'll let them try it on. But if not, just just grab this, grab this. this yeah. uh, okay, you can't see it because I'm I'm we're video chatting and it's a podcast. But like I'm I'm grabbing my shoulder seam and I'm like, look how it can crush into my hand because there's no fucking padding in there, you know. And they go, mm. oh. And I think that like you know, trying to get people to do that on their own is the biggest way to get them to fully appreciate at least our our mode of clothing. You know, if they're if they're like not into suits at all, then. It doesn't matter, you know, but there's still other stuff you can do, you know, like, oh, my T-shirt's not polyester. It's cotton mm -hmm. or, or something, you know. I mean, I remember one of the first things that really got me into vintage was just like, again, going into vintage stores and like, oh, yeah, feeling the feeling the tangible difference from like clothes that were made, you know, like 70 years ago versus clothes that are made now. Yeah. Um, and there is like a huge difference. Like, you know, I mean, one of the things is that a lot of the cloth is much heavier. Part of that is that's just like what tended to survive. But also they just didn't have the ability to make super fine wool that we have now. Um, and yep. so everything feels much more solid. Everything feels much more like, I don't know. It, it feels like more real to me. Like it doesn't feel like cheap or costumey or anything. It's like, this is what a real garment is supposed to feel like. Uh, and that's one of the reasons I got so into vintage and I haven't been able to like stop it because I'm like, just the, the level of like the, the way that the cloth feels and the construction and everything. Um, you just have to pay so much to get that in modern you, clothes. You know, what's so funny. I kind of wish like people did that, but with like modern clothes. And what I mean that is, I mean, I wish vintage people appreciated contemporary menswear a lot more. Yeah. Because I, mean, I, remember... I still do like, you know, it's no, no, just yeah, yeah. Not, yeah. Not, not you. I'm, I'm saying like, yeah. you know, back then people were like, Oh, suit of all modern suits suck. Like the, I remember one, one guy was like, he had a conspiracy theory that all modern like wools have polyester woven into it because it feels too, like too thin. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, like feel like a 12 ounce, like, you know, or I guess 12 is not that heavy, but like, you know, a 16 ounce flannel from like Fox mm -hmm. brothers or whatever, or, or feel like Chris bear, which is like light, yeah. but like, it still has a lot of drape to it. It's not like the eight ounce super one sixties, like just like <laughs> something that'll just tear, you know, mm -hmm. or that, that, that uh, it feels much like silk. Like there are things that still feel really good. Like, no, I to love be clear, the like, balloon feels. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be clear. Like I would love, yeah, I'm just saying, um, it's much easier to pay like two hundred dollars or one hundred fifty for a vintage sport coat than, <laughs> than yeah, for yeah. a balloon jacket, you know. Yeah, I obviously, but it's still uh -huh. like uh, you know, no, I wish, but I get, I wish I it went saying. both ways, right? Like, but I wish... you could also you could also just say that with it's like all the guys who are like, you know, I hate suits because I the only ones I've ever worn are like my tuxedos for choir or like a suit that I rented for a friend's wedding, mm -hmm. and then like have them yeah like feel something that's actually nice <laughs> like you can even get something from like spear and mckay with like a nice cloth or whatever and uh they they will they will be able to hopefully feel the difference yeah yeah what, are, what other experiences have we had that, that were pretty tangible because i know you okay so you said yours you know going to these these stores and everything and i guess i was kind of the same way like i i the funny thing is that i try and write a lot to kind of get as much out of the internet as possible but obviously we still try and say hey go do this in person because mm -hmm. um, i mean back then um when i was younger i definitely did try and do everything online like i i didn't fall into the trap but it was still hard because i just wasn't aware of like how i could experience it in person it wasn't mm -hmm. until like 
you know, I started driving and, uh, you know, this is like a sophomore year of college. And I'm like, hey, what if I just look up Vintage Store LA or Vintage Store Orange County or whatever and be like, what's around here? And then I can go, oh, I can try it on. You know, like that was still really um, just really formative for me. Like, I think looking back, there were so many things that I did that what that came from a hands on experience. You know, mm -hmm. it's like, how else are you going to develop any kind of taste without well, without mean, doing it? How much how much uh, I know that I did this when I went to London um, yeah. and, and well, anytime I travel, like I take an opera, I look, it's like, oh, what stores are around here? Like I need to try yeah. stuff on. Um, yeah. And I know you've done that with like your trips to Europe and with uh, like Tokyo and stuff like that, obviously. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I try and do that. I mean, I try and do that here. Like, you know, if there's a store that opens up, I like I try and walk in there and, and try it on. Um, uh, especially I would recommend that for everyone, because I feel like if that's if they have an interest in something, they just have to make that personal connection because otherwise it'll always be like this mythical thing to them. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's it's almost like. I can't I'm, I'm running out of analogies here, but like it's like <laughs> how some people, I don't know, think dating is hard until like their first girlfriend. And then after that, they're like, oh, it's like totally fine. Like, I think I was kind of the same way, you know, it's, it's just kind of like breaking that barrier. Right. Like, like you got to jump in the pool, you know, it's that way you know what water feels like so you can start swimming, you know, and <laughs> touch water. I, I think that touch touch water, bro. Go on, touch grass, touch water, touch every <laughs> piece of nature out there. Um uh, Hide your kids, have your wives. <laughs> right. I don't know where that went. <laughs> I don't know. That was just a, a fun meme. Uh, but, but you know, being able to just experience these things is something I feel like I've always had with every one of my hobbies. You know, like, if I'm, if I'm, if we're really, you know, if Stas and Cult are trying to make me think how I came up with these preferences, I don't know if it's as much as preferences as I just experienced that thing. Like, I... I think I said this before, maybe in the stream where like I, as a kid, I tried on my mom's tap dancing shoes and that's like a whole homophobic thing where maybe they, at the time they thought I was going to turn out gay. Cause you know, and Hey, maybe it was like the AIDS crisis of the nineties. People thought of thought crazy stuff, but I really liked, I, I mean, I still like tap dancing now. I, you know, I, we were, I, we watched uh singing in the rain, but this idea that like, I really like a dainty shoe may stem from that. You know, I, 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 I don't know, but that's like the best thing. When we first talked about like low vamp shoes, I do say that it reminds me of like flats, you know, and I like it. I like how it looks. And, you know, now when I try on shoes, I'm like, if I put it on, I'm like, oh, it's, it's too high. The vamp's too high on my foot. Doesn't look good to me, you know? Um, so the lesson from that is like, obviously I developed that from like a, a hands-on experience. It didn't come from nowhere, but now I use it in an in-person, uh, metric you mm -hmm. know or like when i when i would try on jackets like oh i like an extended shoulder like i didn't do that just because it looked good like from a photo but i also wanted to try it on to make sure it works for me it's also how i i realized i don't like you know structured shoulders for example i just don't like how that looks on me because i tried it on i got it maybe i just need to try on a really good one you know to follow my own advice but I, as of right now i don't really feel the need to like you know thrift one or whatever mm -hmm. you know yeah. um that's how I've done all of a lot of things. I mean, even film score, for example. Like I, I get into a film score score not just because I like every film score. I don't. I don't like the whole genre. I like scores from movies that I have watched. So it's like I have a personal connection to that thing. It is. It is tied to that experience. Mm -hmm. And um, and in a more abstract thing, like with with the uh, with the um, tap dancing shoes, I feel like I have all these preferences because of formative in-person experiences you know i mm -hmm. i like 30s clothing because when i tried it on i saw that the proportions but pocket harmony just looked good i remember i bought a a 50 suit on ebay because i was like oh i can't really afford going to paper moon all the time i'm gonna try and ebay this yeah and i think it was f slightly long you know maybe yeah. you know it was and and the the button point was lower it was inharmonious and i'm like this is this feels wrong yeah and i know it because i tried it on you know <laughs> this is why i'm like my my whole thing with button pocket harmony isn't just about like design like i like when i put it on when things are inharmonious it just looks off to me like i i think that the ludlow is not good because i put it on and i don't like how <laughs> it looks it is not just a blind hatred i just i visually i'm like i i see all this stuff on my body i'm like hell no yeah you know and if you're like me then you'll you'll follow me too you don't have to but you know um but you, you should. should 
Yeah, but what about you, MJ? What about like what does it mean to learn tangibly with you? You're the you're the newest person the new for guy. this. The newest one. Like, what are some tangible experiences or what have you learned tangibly? Yeah, I mean it's pretty much going off of being friends with you too. I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, but like the whole like ha- just having friends that <laughs> you know, to try or do stuff with kind of like yeah. uh like it's like a kind of a cheat code or like a fast pass to like some things it's a um, fast yeah. <laughs> yeah specifically a fastest a fastest it's a fastest <laughs> specifically being a similar size to ethan um oh that's gonna help yeah i mean so, sometimes i don't even have to say anything he just like he's just like hey try this on and then it's like th- that i'm already experiencing <laughs> you know i mean I- i'm not saying that he's force that ethan forces me to that like, you never forced me yeah, i hope hobby, i hope right? that the, the takeaway from this and especially the previous episode about evangelism is that like I'm, I'm trying to be like i'm not that i'm not being like hey you gotta do yeah, this you, but yeah he forced me into uh into <laughs> into all his <laughs> old suits well it's it's one of those things where it's like you know Maybe it's it's like a par- <laughs> no, that sounds even worse. <laughs> like a parental thing of like you know like your baby and you're like oh, I don't want to eat this dad. Like you try it, you'll like it, yeah. you know. And so I I feel that way, you know. I I, I feel <laughs> evangelical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I I can record. I can, I mean I don't know. I feel like I know that you want. <laughs> I know that you want to do this. Yeah. You're, you know I what's know good for me, want. right? Um, yeah, I, I I don't know. Like, I was talking to a you know, not not to cut you off here, but like I I was talking to a friend, and he made the analogy of um, uh, like you know, limiting purchases, and and we'll talk about that later on this year about like how to like to know when to not buy something. And he said he didn't want to have a library of of stuff. Yeah, and I know he meant it more of like as an archive, like like a, as a like you know like a museum where you don't actually use it. You know what I mean? Mm. But I thought of it as like, oh, a lending library. Like I wonder if something is I buy at least in the past where I'm like, I like this, and I know other people will like it, and so if I own it, then and it, someone else then wants cool. to wear it, yeah. I can. Well, no, if someone else wants, it, I can. I I know that I can let Amity try it on. That I it'll it'll spark something in him because mm. I. I am aware that I am very similar size. You know what I mean? Isn't that yeah. it's like a, Tom Haverford's business plan in Parks and Rec? I don't know if his well his his whole Rent goal is, for, is to make money, but uh, my yeah. thing is to spread taste and uh, <laughs> appreciation of clothing. Um, but no, I yeah, it's like uh, it's kind of like how like opposite, right? Like oh, you, like oh, I, I don't want to go airsoft, you know, with you guys. I don't have any gear. I'm just like, well, you're my size. Here, borrow my stuff. Like, yeah. like he's trying put to on, lessen the, the excuses. The, yeah. yeah, like, like yeah, th- that way, it, and, and it's working. Like, I'm inspired to go more now because I can try it on from him. And so, like, there's this kind of weird lending library of like being that guy for my friends. I don't think it's it, that's like a conscious thing I do, but it's like, it's like what James Cameron said, like about the helicopter scenes. Like, if I like it, there's a chance someone else is gonna like it. So I'm gonna yeah, do it anyway. Yeah. And so. If I have a spirit point collar, it's like, oh, hey, MJ, if you want, you could borrow this, you know, and kind of hint, hint. And I, and, and I know that, you know, because we're similar and we're friends, he might have the same appreciation, too. Yeah. And if not, that's OK. But at least he has that option because I know that being tangible and analog with all this menswear stuff is going to help sell that to him later on. And look at him now. Look we at him same, now. We have the same pajamas, I think. You were wearing like, I mean, I'm not wearing the pants right oh, now, yeah. but. <laughs> yeah we have the same like black watch pajamas yeah. um but yeah any any other any other like standout like experiences that you've had t- that were tangible i mean not not really i mean it's it's all just kind of like like a f- uh a flow <laughs> or I, I guess like a uh a whole like slew of things sometimes because it's like yeah um you know just like I mean, we haven't gone to like a menswear event for like a while, but I I remember what I felt like we were doing one pretty, pretty regularly. Um, also, like RIP the bloke and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. But like just going to those sort of things and just like meeting people at those um, at those events, kind of, uh, kind of just just being around, you just kind of absorb a lot of inspiration and again we we at these things we try on like a lot of stuff so like yeah. it's just like it's just like you know real life exposure versus just looking at it through a screen um and looking at it from like like it can only look so good online i think um um you know what would really suck if there was <laughs> a store me. where the owner didn't want people to try stuff on 
Can you imagine something like that? Uh, I can think of a couple of things. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why the best stories are the ones that encourage you to try out everything. Honestly, like uh-huh. that's that that honestly like like nice pilled me. You know what I mean? Like like I. Like when's the last time we bought something at Joyride? <laughs> like you know how how often do we go in there and spend two hours just trying on stuff? And then hey, to be fair, I do buy from Joyride a lot. Okay, I, right, right, a lot. I'm probably I mean, gonna like, buy I something bought... from them like this week. I I bought I bought a yellow Gab shirt. Look yeah, at this shouting right. out. I mean, again, like I think. The fact and hey, if they hate us, they do a really good job of masking it. <laughs> yeah, they do. But it's but it's uh but I, I think it's cool. Like, you know, whenever they get something in, they're like, Yeah, try it on. Like or mm-hmm. and they tell us too, like every time they get like a new buy in, they're like every it goes through the rounds, everyone tries it on because they yep. know like it might not make it to the floor at some yeah. point, you know? And uh-huh. that's the best part, you know. I think I think that's really great. Like I think when I met also like when I met Mark Cho, like I know he was probably definitely trying to sell me on a lot of stuff, which I don't have the money for. And also, like it's <laughs> it's I'm in L.A. I can't buy flannel, but he's like, mm-hmm. "Yo, try on like the road jacket. Hey, try on this new balloon, you know, or whatever." Mm-hmm. And I and I, I think obviously I I he he must have some ulterior motive. He's a salesman, <laughs> but yeah. it, it's true. It's it's hard for me to be like now that I know what it's like. It's I it's. And I and I enjoy it. Like, well, damn, what's stopping me? You know, because mm-hmm. at that point, then it is just money and space, which is true. But at least before that, it's not a tangible thing. You can have any excuse you want, but once you once you make it real, it's like, well, what's stopping you, man? Mm-hmm. And, what's stopping you? And I guess for me, that who's that gonna point stop is, me? <laughs> I guess for me at that point, it's it's that's why you have to have strong taste. That's why you don't just buy everything you put on. Yeah. But um, but one one other thing too is like you know whenever we go to flea markets, like we do try on like everything. Like we want oh, yeah. we want to yeah. make sure. You know, and maybe that's just like a vintage, a holdover from vintage where it's like, you never know if you're going to see it again. So like, you uh-huh. might as well try it on that yeah. way. Again, or it's like, it, it's yeah. like, it, for example, like if, you know, if I was looking for, I don't know, like an LL Bean sport vest, or if I was looking for like a seventies, like, you know, 70, 30, whatever, whatever those like outdoor jackets were. I can't remember the, the ratio right now. Um, but ratio. if I wanted <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's like even if I'm not planning on buying one that day, it's like I still want to try it on because it's like, okay, well, now I know like what my size is when I do purchase it. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, yes. And that's the other thing. That's the other thing is like I still I have been burned enough times buying stuff online where either the measurements that the seller had were off or as you said sometimes they're just missing missing measurements or sometimes they like lie they about the or they just condition. don't fit right they just don't fit yeah right. or it just yeah. doesn't fit right like all the measurements li- line up but the way it's cut it just doesn't look right. right i always prefer to try stuff on especially if i'm gonna be spending like a significant amount of money mm-hmm. i really hate the feeling of ordering something and then like you know waiting for it to ship for like two weeks and not knowing if i'm gonna like it or not that just like feels bad the whole time yeah. well either either way too it's like if you try it on you can at least compare it now like it's like an experiment to compare it to other things that you've tried on yeah and, and, then, and then also like use what you've tried on as a metric for the stuff i i still realize that you can't always try everything on and some stuff is really great online and mm-hmm. you know but it's good to be like okay at least if i compare this to my other pair of jeans i should be okay not to say yeah. that, that again not to be like at the beginning where you can gain the system but having that tangible experience definitely helps you mm-hmm. and i think it's also important to talk about like you know if we were talking about experimenting that's the best way to do it too it's, it's really easy to be like oh like i mean before with you guys like oh berets are kind of odd not saying that you guys were against it but it's like it's hard to see yourself wearing a beret if you can't just try one on yeah, yeah exactly right? and i really lucked out that like when i thought about the beret I was able, like, my, my mom and my grandma had some, and I was able to, like, just straight up just start using it. And yeah. that's what helped it, you know, that's what helped me, like, really incorporate it to, like, be a major part of my style. Even, like, five years later, I'm still wearing berets, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know? And the same thing with, like, fedoras, too. It's, like, it's easy to be, like, oh, fedoras are really dorky or, or you know, or just I can't wear them. And then, like, you know, you find one that fits or you find one that's in the right color or the one that has the right brim. And you're like, oh, it actually looks good. It frames my face correctly. Mm-hmm. On the flip side, that's how I know that, like, even though I love the way 1930s fedoras look, the tall crown with short brim does not make my face look good because yeah. I have a round face. It looks really good on Spencer because he has a, a longer face. But, like, for me, I can't do it. So I, I can't do a completely period fedora, but I kind of, like, approximate it by getting the one that's proportional. You know, mm-hmm. and now I like wearing fedoras. And even now, like I, maybe this is just a weird thing that I do. But like when I'm in my room, I just 
wear my fedora. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's like, but like putting it on inspires no, me to wear. It feels inspires good, yeah. me for other stuff. No, I mean, yeah, it's it's one of those things. Like I, I'm I'm lucky to have space in my room where I can like just put on whatever something I feel like it, and that's how the backlog happens, dude. I mm-hmm. get it's not just visual, and you know, it's not just me seeing inspiration. Like I will, I'm like I'll be like. One o'clock in the morning, and I will put on like <laughs> I know I sound weird. I'll yeah. put on like I'll put on like my blazer. I'll be like, oh man, I want to wear th- I want to wear this tomorrow, or I'll wear it like the next day. The an opening in the background goes up. Okay, I'm, well, I mean, hey, it here's to here's a little behind the scenes look for people not in the video call. But if you look behind me, I don't know if you guys can see it. My mic might be like blocking it. I have a bunch of clothes on my bed because I was <laughs> yeah. figuring out what I was wearing to Jay's party tonight, mm. and that's that's like right before we started recording. Yeah, um, see, there's something about like you know, also like like try on clothes, like put it on, like don't. Yeah. We, we, because uh, I mean, it's listen. Yeah. As much as I know my wardrobe and I know how everything looks, so like things look different. Like sometimes two things can look weird with each other, and you're not gonna know unless you like actually try it on. Mm-hmm. I will say, uh, as a caveat, I did. I have a game that where I can just put it together, and I'm I'm really good. Okay. Um, <laughs> but there are times where I do change things up it's sometimes mm-hmm. it's uh it's usually like the tie like that's usually when i'm like oh i i didn't make a white decision on this yeah. you know like you put it together you, you knot it and you see how it is all together and you're like yeah but we did have a, a uh there was like a, a comment on my discord about like flat lays and i have like i'm like flat lays are stupid because you uh-huh. don't see it on anything you just see the items it's, it's, it's like it's like it's almost like you're reading it mm-hmm. like you're you're it's like it's like a visual word i mean i guess words can be visual if they're written <laughs> down but it's yeah. like it's like a sign yeah. it doesn't tell you anything it's just like look at my clothes but it's like no but what does it look like on you yeah like i kind of want like someone to like post some really good stuff and then when they put it on it's like it just sucks you know because yeah. I, I that, that could be, be it that could be it That's like cool. yeah. it, it's possible yeah, you know, and, and obviously the people listening to this are not are not in the beginning phase, but I think there is this uh, idea that we should reinforce just really trying stuff out and being tangible with it. I mean, even even if you're like you're not at the menswear singularity yet, maybe maybe you're like doing slim pants because I remember talking to Michael and mm-hmm. I, it was a long discussion because he's like, oh, I could never wear like wide leg pants. I look dumb. And I, I don't know what what point he did. Maybe like his dad gave him a pair of like wider like RLs, and he was like, "Oh shit, this is good." And like, <laughs> uh, you can't see. But I'm giving a "Oh really?" face. You know, yeah. like yeah, like, like fucking, owl. Like, yeah, yeah, like fucking trust me here. You know, or it's like yeah, same thing with like if I can like give a friend a beret, I'm like, oh like oh, it's really good. Or or like giving him a soft shoulder jacket. There's something that just kind of changes. Something that's different than what they normally do. Once they put it on, it's such a transformative experience. Mm-hmm. It's not even like again. It doesn't even have to be at the beginning stages of your style. It could even be something like you just haven't done yet. Like, I guess for for us, it's berets. Sometimes I like like a bandana. I thought bandanas were weird on me. I, I have a I have a kind of a thick neck. I have a round face. Yeah. I don't have a I don't have Jay's nice skinny <laughs> swan like neck. neck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I I remember like and he loves wearing bandanas. Like you know, and I was always like I don't know. Like I feel weird. And I bought one, and I'm like damn i'm into this you know and i i do it occasionally you know and i think it's the same thing with like a low vamp where people are like oh it looks so dainty they put on the thing i'm like and they go ethan you're right yeah i know i'm fucking right dude <laughs> like and most of the time people go like oh yeah I, I you know this is how people get pilled from like button pocket harmony once they see it and they you know they just they just really they it really transforms them because being tangible being analog just really ties you to the experience you know mm-hmm. it's it's like photography. I don't know. Like, I think there's also levels to like the like how analog something is. Like, I think after I started doing film photography, I really it made me appreciate just digital even more. You know, yeah. I think I take I think I definitely take less photos now because I'm more intentional with it. Well, because did you uh, like I know that like one of my photography professors talked about how um, even though uh, it's it's not very practical to do um, like f- film photography as a photojournalist. Uh, if you did just like doing film photography improves your skills as a as a fo- photographer in general, uh, because especially if you're if you're developing your own film um, and making your own prints, uh, that's really showing you like how a camera works and like what parts you need to manipulate in order to get the image to look the way you want, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, that, that's that's exactly it. I mean, yeah. Now, now I feel like whenever I snap a photo, I'm closer to what it should be as opposed to like, oh, I can just edit that later. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I can, I can be a lot more intentional. And to bring back like the, um, you know, uh, the music thing, it's like when I, like when you get to play it, 
it really ties to the music. And, and by that, I mean, um, talk, talk about like writing music. There's some, something that someone told me where I was, I wrote this phrase and someone goes, people can't play that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, and why? Because it's like, you have to think about the people playing it. Like you can't, mm-hmm. you can't just, just write notes. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, like you're writing for a person with this particular instrument, you know, and you wouldn't know that unless like someone told, or let, you know, you've got to experience it. Yeah. Um, and so, like with with anything, it, it's like it's just so important to be analog and to appreciate things. I mean, I think that's why people there's been a push, you know, buy from brick and mortar. That's why brick and mortar still exists today. I know it's still hard, but a lot of a lot of stores really see the importance of it. I mean, it's good marketing, mm-hmm. but it's also mm-hmm. like they know that a guy will buy something if they can try it on and talk to talk to a person. Mm-hmm. You know, like you can't just AI chat your <laughs> your way into a purchase or yeah. whatever. You know, um, I guess semi related. Do you guys like physical or ebooks? How about that? You know, about... um, I, I typically like physical books, I guess. Yeah. Like um, the it's they're definitely I don't know there. I it's I think it's different with clothes because you can say with like ebooks it's like, oh, well, it's nice that there's like a search thing. Yeah. Like you can search things. So I guess it, it, you know, it depends on what type of book. If I'm using it for like reference, mm-hmm. like for mm-hmm. maybe even for the podcast or for an academic thing, it's nice to have like a searchable text. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but if I'm reading for uh, personal pre- pleasure, I like having a physical book. Maybe I went too deep into it, but that's my answer. No, <laughs> I think that that's the thing. You know, yeah. when I, when you look at it, I think if you're being pragmatic about clothing, like if you're, if you're the opposite of what we want, mm-hmm. I think that you shouldn't be tangible with clothes because like, maybe that, that that's like a Spock thing. You put too much emotion into it. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. like, if you want to connect with something or if it, you know, if you, like for me, if I want to connect with a book, I, it's gotta be physical. Right. If I'm reading something just to get through it, then yeah, ebook it. Cause I don't fucking care. I'll just scroll. I'll just, I'll, it does. It, it's the most detached I can be, you know? Mm. But if I'm like, if I'm like, like the, the book I referenced earlier, rough ideas by Stephen Huff, like I want to connect with this book. I want to see the. I want to touch the book. I want to. Smell. I also want to have an experience with the book. I mean, yeah, smell. <laughs> the, hey, the smell of paper is really good. But like, like for me, reading is not just reading the book. It's like, what am I like? What's the experience of, of reading it? Like that's why mm-hmm. I. I can honestly, for me, I can only read when I'm outside, like at a coffee shop, because mm. like it's a whole thing. When I'm reading at home, it feels like I'm just I'm just reading because mm. I have to. Yeah. Um, to to stretch yeah. this uh, book analogy a little bit further, uh, I feel like I focus better with physical books uh yeah. compared yeah. to yeah, yeah. uh like on my phone or on my computer so it's kind of like the same thing how it's like trying on clothes or like seeing clothes in person versus just like you know on an ebay page just like there's a million hits on you know whatever mm-hmm. you're looking at versus like yeah trying you know two or three pieces like in person i guess yeah yeah i mean it's 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 like it's like me with uh, with movies too, right? Where like I I think I get it better when like when I watch a movie in the theater mm-hmm. versus like at home. You know, oh, yeah. about, I mean, there's something about the experience. You know, we come to this place. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> heartbreak feels good in a place like this. Yeah, like this, a place yeah. like the movie theater. You know, I can't watch. No, but I mean, Wonder I agree. Woman. That's one of the things. That's one of the things that I see all the time on like the the movies like subreddit, the default movie subreddit is people will be like, why? Like, well, I have like a big fifty inch TV and a good sound system. Like, why would I ever go to the movie theater? Mm-hmm. And it's like you don't. I don't know. Like, there is yeah, sure. There's like something. I, Ryan Johnson just had a good quote about this where he was talking about Knives Out, and someone was like, so why do you think this should be seen in a theater? And he's like, it's not about like you have to see it on the biggest screen possible or you need the best sound or whatever. It's like, because it's like a movie that you're supposed to sit in a room and laugh at and enjoy with other people. Like that's, that's part of it too. And a lot of people I feel like either don't understand that that is part of the supposed to be part of the appeal of movie theaters, or maybe they just don't like it, but I do. I like experiencing art and movies with other people. I want to be in a room full of people Being like, oh shit, when a portal opens up and then <laughs> Tommy McGuire walks through. Yeah. And I'm like, that's. Yeah. It. Hey, Infinity yeah. War, like, packed theaters. That, okay, yeah. is, it, I, you know, also it was pre COVID, so it was like a different world. Infinity War mm-hmm. and Endgame are probably, I know, again, Marvel, but like, that's probably like one of the craziest, like, in person yeah. 
experiences of my life you know i mean i get it it's like people go like to raves like it's not just about like beat boop music i know that that's like you know i don't like edm but like i get the appeal of like being there around people yeah you know and it's it's also cool like for me the the few edm songs i have are the ones i heard in person because i just there's something about it like i can't i can't escape i can't escape that you know those songs i heard when my friends because i wanted to be cool and i was a senior and i thought i was wasting my life I I went down to San Diego and I went to see an audience concert and that was crazy. And but I still have those songs and I'm like, damn it, like I, I can't it just it's so personal to me. Yeah. And the thing about you said about experiencing stuff with people as a, as like a final section here for like the last five minutes, it's like, you know, one of the best parts about clothing is that you get to wear it outside. Absolutely. And I and the funny thing is that I'm the person who is no context. I will still wear things even when I'm home. But I know mm. that if it was up to me, I would still do things outside. Like, I, it's not just, I'm not doing it as a bubble. It's more so, like, I'm not going to spend gas. You know what I mean? But, like, but like yeah. if, if someone if someone says, hey, Ethan, let's go get a boba, that's, like, that's, like, a, that's like a great thing to do. Like, it's, you know, we're, we're going to get into what constitutes an occasion in a future episode. And, but as a, as a little spoiler, to me, it's, like, everything. Life is an occasion, you know? Mm. And, and it's because clothing is personal it's tangible you, you put it on and it moves with you hmm. you like if, if i was really concerned about like the 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 fit as a rig like the, the combination i would have gotten my jollies if i just <laughs> put it together like stood straight and be like okay that i did it and then take it yeah. out like that's not that's not how it works like i i want to i want to walk around like, mm-hmm. I, like i think i said it before in a previous episode or maybe on a stream where right now it, it's fucking pouring in la right now I don't have any meetings. I don't have any errands to do today because I did it, you know, previously. I don't have to dress up today. I could do it in my room, but I, I got dressed up anyway. And what I found is that I like walk around the room. Like I, I take meetings while walking around. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I just, I just feel like I want to move. I want to feel something wearing these clothes. And of course, like I could, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna walk for no reason. But like it just happens because it's such, a, it's such an analog, tangible experience. Mm-hmm. And you get that, you know, when you get to wear your clothes outside and, and this whole social thing, I think Derek, right. I work where it talks about clothing as a language, you know? Yeah. It's fun to like make up your own language at home, but like the best part is if you can communicate with someone. Right. Yeah. And, and you get stuff, you pick up slang from people. Mm-hmm. What's clothing slang? I guess inspiration. You get, you pick up ideas from other people uh-huh. that you can adopt for yourself. And it's best to see it from another person. Like, um, even though like, again, we're not beginners. Like I still will get ideas from, like seeing other people like Spencer, what are you wearing right now? A gray jacket with red shirt. That's right. I see. It's like, damn. I, I mean, I, I, I know. Okay, technically, I am looking at you, looking at you through the internet. But like, yeah. I, if I was just relying on my own inspiration, like of like my own color combos, like I can't. I wouldn't. I don't know. There, there was stuff I'd miss. I uh-huh. would potentially miss out on this idea of the of the the red polo with uh, with the uh, gray jacket. You know, That's right. or in person. Like what was what was Jay wearing at the at his birthday yesterday? Like gray pants, blue shirt. Like I know that, that yeah. sounds so basic, but like, like he's wearing a plain blue shirt, and I wear I wear striped shirts all the time. And it's like oh, because of this in person interaction, I can see how comfortable he is. It's not just about the colors; it's about seeing Jay as a person wearing this mm-hmm. wearing this outfit. I'm like, damn, I want to do that, you know. <laughs> and sometimes, like yeah, it, you know, you can learn a lot from the internet. You can get inspiration, but seeing a guy wear what you would have seen online, but with your own eyeballs, you can touch him yeah. uh, with, with consent. Obviously <laughs> I can, you know, uh, it just, it's just another experience for me, you know, like I, I, I would love it. Like if I, if I moved, lived in New York, I feel like I would do social media less, right? Like, cause you would mm. just see it, you know, all the time. I, and, and I know that JTR is going to be like, Hey, move to New York. But like, I get it. I get why, like, like there's so much fashion in places like that because you just see so much, yeah. you know, you, you get to, and you get to see how it is in person. Like, as in like, they're on the subway, they're walking, you know, I think that, you know, I, I mean, I, there are a couple of times where I'm like at the flea market or like at a coffee shop. I'm like, Oh, that person's dressed well. And it can inspire something from the backlog. Mm-hmm. But like, I, I get it. Like, you know, being around people just makes fashion much more interesting. It's, it's not even about like showing off your fit. It's about getting stuff from other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a uh, it's a social thing. It's a social thing. Yeah, social network. Yeah. The I'm, my prod is at the cleaners. The social network. <laughs> I yeah. like how the most recent friend we have is legitimately so similar to us that we can't like <laughs> like it's, it's all... 
<laughs> Although, hey, I mean, I mean, he does wear a cable knit uh, brown cardigan, and Spencer does that. I do. It's my at home cardigan. Yeah, it's funny because he is similar in personality, but he just also straight up does not dress like me, which is good. It's proof yeah. that even uh, if you're around us, you don't dress exactly like us. It's not the same. I mean, we don't exactly dress like each other anyways. So. Yeah. That's true. Hey, if you want to see more examples of that, you got to go to the Stand That's right. portrait session. Ooh. Oh, or oh, oh, yeah. the Patreon. Or that too. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Hey, we, Join the Discord. We did... uh... It's the internet, but it's the good internet. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, hey, here's the thing. There is a place called Meetup Planning, and it's because we encourage people to meet up. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the whole thing. This whole The whole, I think, of the internet is to, like, prepare you as much as you can and get all the inspiration to, like, get out there. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, I mean, hey, I don't know if I've talked about... I'm pretty sure I've I've mentioned what Psy is um, before, but, like, the whole idea behind Psy is that it's a Discord for local Asian Americans to hang out like the whole idea is it's mm-hmm. it's it stands for so southern so socal asian interactive because yep. it's not just an, a discord it is about like hey let's go get boba hey let's go get dinner hey there's a movie showing hey board game night it's about that it's about it's about fostering as much interaction as possible and and the realization that yeah internet is good and some people are there only for the internet but you can have this option to make real friends and you should to bring it back make real friends with your clothing yeah like you gotta you gotta do it outside and you gotta you, that sounds wrong you gotta <laughs> you gotta you gotta, you gotta you gotta be tangible you gotta Why be don't we do a it real friend room. that's for the beatles heads out there you yeah. know i wonder yeah. if people are gonna listen to this and be like like uh ethan hates like all like he he devalues online friendships and relationships yeah that's just twitter talk <laughs> but here's well twitter here's the thing video. right if I'm in your city, let's hang out. Well, not that's not an open invitation, but I'm saying usually... Hey, let's hang out right now. Come yeah. to my house. My it's, address. It's my yeah. address. Yeah. Uh, I, remember I, was, I remember I was uh, talking to a friend about how um, I was like a fuckboy t- uh, Tumblr guy. Cause, okay, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the real story. Uh, <laughs> so I would... T- I, you know, back then, I, I would have like Tumblr girlfriends. Um, and I remember uh, there was this girl I was talking to in like Connecticut or whatever. And I started to get this crush on the girl who lived in NorCal. Again, two people I've never met in my life. And when someone uh, someone anonymously asked me, hey, who would be your New Year's kiss? This is fucking high school, yeah. okay, whatever. And um, I said, oh, this girl in North in NorCal. And the Connecticut girl was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> and it's like, and, and here's, here, here's my reasoning that ties back to this whole thing. It's because conceivably i would maybe go to norcal more than i'd go to connecticut <laughs> huh. right. and so it's go, more yeah. t- it's more tangible right <laughs> there's, there's no it's time difference mm-hmm. yeah and um that there, there's your ethan lesson yeah. i like how it's been a while since we haven't because we haven't streamed in like a long time but i'm bringing back the weird ethan anecdotes that tie yeah. very loosely to the to the concept mm-hmm. anyway touch grass touch your menswear wear your menswear outside that's the <laughs> whole thing clothes. of this that's you course. know, and uh, and if you're, you know, if you know that you have friends who might be in Taiwan, so encourage them to try stuff out. Like, I mean, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, you can thank Andy, or I, Andy can thank me for letting him try on some stuff. He can, uh, Michael can thank me for letting him to to, to convince him about wide leg pants. I take my friends shopping all the time because they want to, not because I'm forcing them, <laughs> but because it's like I I know that they want it to to see it on their bodies. I mean, we talked about Joseph, right? There's a whole mm. I I I feel sad because I don't think I don't know what images I could use with this with this blog post if oh, I man. used I used a lot of them in the previous evangelism one. But like, yeah, that the whole thing of Joseph like trying on the high rise J Crew chinos was like eye opening for him. Yeah, you know. So do that. Do it. But do it. I get it, you guys. You know, it, IRL is hard. So the huh. next best thing, what was that, Spencer? You said it That's earlier. That's right, the Discord, That's which right. you can find on patreon.com slash style and direction. That's right. It, ultimately, the whole thing is for you to help us and, uh, you know. Yeah, help us, please. Help me. Please. Please. Uh, to contribute, you know, to contribute to this podcast because you guys support us. It's not it's not a mandatory thing, but we do have a Discord community be, for people who, you know, it's a bunch of people who spend $5 on us, you know. Some of them even spend $10. Which and, we'll get uh, to in a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I and I need to I need to say, um, I need to say who it is because I know we've had some uh, some changes lately. So, uh, hold on a second. I'm gonna open this and I'm gonna go current tier and I'm gonna say thank you to Alexander Batten, Henrik Wilberg, Jarek Colian, Philip Regard, Shane Curry, and 
John Clifford. We appreciate. I guess there wasn't mm-hmm. any changes. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I, I I got a notification. It's fine. It's like okay. I, I I thought that the list would change, but it didn't. Uh, thank you to those guys. Ten dollars a month. Uh, we really appreciate it for those extra five dollarinos. Um, I honestly don't know <laughs> what <laughs> images are going to be, but there's going to be an essay and some, be some pictures. I don't know what they are yet, but we're going to figure it out. Yeah. Um, well, uh, yeah, I'm. You can follow me at Ethan M. Wong. I'm at Spencer DSO. You can find me at Aya oh, yeah, MJ. And follow the Style and Direction podcast on Instagram at Style and Direction. Oh, did we uh, say you get one bonus episode a month with the uh, oh, Patreon in addition? Oh, thank you. That's right. In addition to access to our exclusive Discord. Yeah, if you love more of us. Yeah, where we talk about movies and sometimes other things, but mostly movies. That's right. We're still movie guys, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Five thousand month Patreon. Comment slash on the direction. Yeah. Uh, really great stuff coming up. I don't want to tease anything else, but you know, we'll see what February topics have to hold for us. Yeah, let's so, say Valentine's Day. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.